Yes, it's gambling. Can we move on now? Do you need like a, um, uh, do you want me to write that down for you in a notebook and autograph it for you? Here, here. Please. All right, in this video, I'm going to talk about EV, which is expected value. And when you make good bets, you have a high EV in expected value. And with low EV or low return, well, that's a bad bet. For example, if you spend 150 on a box of cards and it returns 200, well, that's good EV. Why wouldn't you do that? You do it every time. And when hobby boxes were, were affordable or even like booster boxes were affordable, you'd have decent EV. But now that boxes have skyrocketed upwards, the EV is not nearly as good. So today, with that $150 hobby box being four, five hundred, some cases twelve hundred dollars, and the product inside, well, it hasn't scaled up with that. Your return hasn't scaled up with the cost to play. And what ends up happening, I want you to show me a professional card breaker that gets into breaks, or a professional pack opener, like there is a professional poker player or a professional sports better it's, it's rare in those cases to be successful very rare very few people could do it and i don't know of one out there that does it with sports cards and breaking or opening wax and what keeps people coming back is the thrill of the chase it's the thrill of hitting the big hot player or the guy your guy it's that thrill of the chase even though the ev the expected value doesn't make sense to keep going or to keep playing. It's the excitement, the thrill, the what if. Am I going to hit huge? The opening cards is fun, extremely fun. You do it responsibly and you do it without losing a ton of money. You want to have some value in it. And so just know if you are playing or spending big that the odds are generally stacked against you to break even. What's your take on it all? Is opening packs, breaking, is it a lot of fun or is it just a bad gamble disguised as fun? You know, because I've cried a thousand times, I'm going to cry some more. But I've soared with the eagles and I've slithered with the snakes and I've been everywhere in between. And I'm going to tell you something right now. There's one guarantee in life and that there are no guarantees. Yeah. And uh, I understand this. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody likes a quitter. Nobody said life was easy. So if you get knocked down, take the standing eight count, get back up and fight again. And you're a macho maniac. Dig it. When you can get cards like this, autograph rookie Chipper Jones, Hall of Famer, one of the best of his generation for $45. It's a PSA 9 get out of here i mean it's singles are a great market right now go buy what you want you can get, find some amazing deals speaking of good deals if you pull i'm gonna butcher his name so joey l's rookie debut patch really cool inscription his first hit two rbi and on the back it says dm me and furthermore on social media he said that hey man if you pull the card you're invited to thanksgiving so hilarious and i think that the more things like this the more things that are outside of cardboard if we're paying prices like this to hit these cards just like with the paul skeins yeah that's cool it's good it connects us to the sport the game we love with our cards if you didn't hear mike tyson quote unquote fought jake paul boxed him and at the end when they asked if Tyson was done, he said, well, I don't know about it. I'd like to face his brother. And so it's rumored that, no, they're not going to box, but they might square up at WrestleMania. However you choose to find yourself in the card world, it exists. It's out there. It's a niche. And it brings a lot of people joy. So as long as you're doing it without crushing your bankroll, do whatever you want. And even if you are crushing your bankroll, it's your money. I wouldn't advocate going to lose $50,000 on sports betting 
it's not good for your mental health but as long as you're doing cards responsibly you like buying singles you like opening wax you can afford the wax who's anyone else to say anything for me personally yeah i don't like all the parallels i don't like all the printing I do feel like it cre creates a, a, a much worse EV because now with all the parallels and overprinting, everything is watered down in price except the hot big player and his huge card. PSA comes out to where you could directly list a card. So let's say you have sent a card into PSA, you put it in their vault. If it's in their vault, you can now directly list it on eBay, which is a great feature. Finally, Sports Card Investor posted this. I bit, but let's talk about it. It's obvious that you want the Spurs jersey. It's also number to 25. It also has a piece of the jersey. I don't see any other side to this. How about you? Which one do you want? It's got to be the Spurs card, right? It's number to 25. The gold card's number to 50. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't. As always, have a great day. Have a great Thanksgiving. And thank you for watching. Hitting me. Parking Ottawa! <laughs> we fucking did it! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> we did it! <laughs> Let's get cooking, baby! What up, everybody? This is Robert Ory, a.k.a. Big Shot Bob, and you're watching Professional Sports Cards. Hey, by the way, go buy my rookie card.